Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The logistics behind the maritime transport of military resources require complex operations with a high degree of precision. This is why the U.S. military forces created the Military Sea Transportation Service in 1949, which is today called the Military Sea Lift Command. This organization controls the replenishment and military transport ships of the United States Navy. To achieve this work, the MSC operates an extensive fleet, including large, medium, and small logistic ships owned by the U.S. Navy. Regularly, the fleet's capabilities are improved by adding new equipment and ships, including multi-purpose vessels. They are designed to handle a wide range of cargo, thanks to their onboard heavy lift cranes and their capacity to have retractable tween decks. Usually, this kind of vessel is operated by a private shipping company that settles an agreement with the military to move their cargo. Those agreements are typically called military charters and play a critical role in supplementing sea lift capabilities. Depending on whether there's a conflict or an additional transportation capacity is needed, the number of those contracts may vary. All of these procedures and operations are necessary for a global scale network considering the more than 800 U.S. military bases spread around the world. That's why having a strong maritime infrastructure is crucial for supplying and sustaining these military stations with personnel, equipment, and supplies. This also applies when international military exercises are carried out since these require a large number of equipment and vehicles. These are used to simulate realistic combat scenarios, which aid in improving the coordination between the U.S. and partner forces. Therefore, when said equipment is needed for these training exercises, it's prepared in the ports where they are loaded onto commercial vessels. Here, the port workers alongside the military personnel coordinate the loading using heavyweight cranes and forklifts that secure the cargo into the vessel deck. Those steps are also followed when military assets are loaded onto different kinds of cargo ships, including roll-on and roll-off vessels, also called row-row ships. Perfect vessel to load a combat aviation brigade uh, for both deployment and redeployment. Um, you can get all the, the helicopters on in one fell swoop. Uh, they go on quickly, they come off quickly. We look at the, the way the world is today. A row-row ship works differently from the more well-known conventional cargo ships, as there is no need to use a crane to lift and load the cargo. Instead, the shipment enters through ramps located at the stern and bow of the vessel. This makes the loading and unloading operations faster, considering less equipment is used during the process.
However, if needed, some models can also be loaded with cranes. Their open deck design allows flexible cargo storage and a wide range of cargo capacity, up to 70,000 gross tons of overall internal volume. These qualities are ideal for transporting military assets, capable of carrying vehicles, equipment and supplies. That's why their use is increasing when delivering such goods to support deployments, training exercises and humanitarian missions around the world. During the process of transporting military equipment using the RORO ships, the port authorities and terminal operators initially make necessary arrangements to receive the cargo. These include checkups of the dedicated ramps and holding yards where the cargo was held, as well as customs clearance and documentation processes for the vehicles. When the ship arrives, Vehicles and cargo are driven or towed onto the ship's decks through the ramps. Trained personnel are in charge of guiding the vehicles and equipment onto the ship, following a designated traffic flow path to optimize space. In case the cargo was comprised of heavy equipment, the port operators may use other tools like forklifts or cranes to handle the load more easily. To handle the cargo inside the ship, a loading plan is followed by the port and military personnel. Such a plan is designed and managed by the cargo planners, who determine the order in which vehicles are loaded considering factors such as weight distribution and destination. This cargo is organized into designated zones based on type and priority to facilitate discharge and delivery at the destination port. Once positioned in their compartments, the cargo is secured using lashings, chains, straps and chocks to prevent shifting or sliding on the vessel's decks. A procedure like this follows international safety regulations, including stability requirements, fire safety measures and emergency response procedures. This is constantly monitored by the crew as well as the integrity of the cargo and ship. When the ship arrives at the destination port, the military and port operators coordinate the preparation of the offloading operation. The cargo and vehicles are driven and towed off the ship using the ramps in a reverse process to the loading. Some final steps at the port include cargo inspections and document clearance before it's released to the next distribution point. This maritime transport is highly connected to land networks, as in ports around the world. 
cargo is prepared in different land vehicles to continue on their way to their destination. The military works alongside several contractors to load vehicles and cargo to ensure a rapid deployment throughout the road infrastructure. Those procedures belong to the line haul operations of the military forces, which mainly focus on using trucks or tractor trailers to move goods over long distances. Cargo vehicles like semi-truck trailers offer the necessary power to handle heavy military assets. The freight is organized and secured on the trucks according to a loading plan, usually made by the partner company in coordination with the military personnel. Such a plan considers factors such as weight distribution, cargo compatibility, and security requirements. Followed up by the obligatory completion of all the necessary documentation, bills, and manifests, the trucks are ready to move to their destination. This efficiency shows the importance of contractors in providing additional capacity and flexibility to supplement the military's transportation capabilities. With the cargo ready and the vehicle set, the transport convoy starts its journey by following the most suitable route. Their schedule is developed to ensure the most efficient operation with the transport departing and arriving at their destinations according to mission timelines. Usually, the vehicles are organized into formations based on their size, type, and function. Arranging vehicles in columns or lines with larger or heavier vehicles typically positioned at the front or rear of the convoy helps to better coordinate the transport vehicles. The convoy personnel remain alert for any potential hazards that may occur, like accidents or mechanical failures. They may be supported by logistics assets like fuel trucks or maintenance vehicles, depending on the condition of the roads and the type of cargo moved. When they arrive at their destinations, their support personnel are responsible for unloading cargo and coordinating further movement or distribution of assets. However, not all land transportation is dominated by trucks and trailers. An important part is shared by rail transport, which can handle large volumes of cargo, including heavy equipment, vehicles, and supplies. The railroads provide a strategic network that is constantly used by military installations and supply depots. There, the heaviest military assets like tanks or artillery weapons are mounted onto the rail cars using cranes and forklifts. The train is equipped with flatbed rail cars, which provide a stable platform for the upcoming cargo. Even so, such cargo is secured with the typical chains or straps and bracing materials that immobilize the equipment. Just as with trucks and trailers, the delivery and arrival process requires coordination between the station personnel and the train. This shows that combining all the transport methods available is necessary to enhance strategic mobility and efficiency for heavy equipment. Those logistics offer unique advantages in supporting military operations.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.